DMA engine. <laughs> this is important for certain users, like anyone with one of these machines. So um, we thought about extending it beyond this, but that's just a thought, because the, the PA6T also has a DMA engine in it. Could start tapping it. Perhaps. I don't have the resources to tap it. So we got to kind of put it on the backlog, see where it, lies, where it falls, right? <laughs> so X1000 currently isn't included. And if you want to go back a little further, the SAM 460 has a DMA channel or two as well, which we do use today. But um, it's used exclusively by the OS, and the programmers aren't allowed to tap it. So I don't think we'll go that far. I think in the X1000 deserves uh, finishing. You know, <laughs> we should add it to there. Anyway, so this DMA engine, it's pretty cool. It has eight channels. Remember DMA channels from the uh, Mega 1000 days? That's the way it works at all, right? So it's speedy. Well, this one, you can do up to two transfers at the same time. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. I, I haven't seen a DMA engine that does dual channels in a, this setting, right? I'm, saying, I'm sure LDS of hardware beats that. But anyway, <laughs> each transaction can handle up to 64 megs. So that's pretty cool too, 64 meg charts. Um, then it has all sorts of extra features that we haven't tapped into. Uh, they're called transaction lists where you can take, uh, say there's a DMA operation going on, transaction, and it's still running. I can tack on another one underneath so you want more operations so you don't restart the engine. It just keeps going. Transaction just keeps continuing. Uh, I imagine that's for streaming. Because that would be a, a nice feature to have if you have a big buffer of frames or I don't know how you would do it. You're moving a lot of data and you just want to keep moving it. Right? So uh, the video guys would step up. Yeah, data chaining, another thing where you can chain transactions. So you have the list and then you can chain transactions. You can have one transaction start right after the other, next one. And spanning, which is weird, you, you can skip chunks of memory in certain patterns, each byte, and move that. Anyway, the hardware's doing it, right? So it's so fast. Mm -hmm. What was your mind? <laughs> What's it for? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, see, when we do um, planar to chunky conversions, it would be useful for that kind of thing. Striking. Striking. Straight. does all these fancy things. Very nice. API. So we have developed the FSL DMA resource. It now exists. Um, it's not fake. <laughs> memory management. So here are the functions for memory management. Uh, DMA, alloc, free, get. So I'm not 100% convinced we're going to keep these. These three. Not yet. Uh, they're kind of added as convenience functions to wrap a lock vec tags. As a lock vec tags can do the same thing these do. Right? And there's a get virtual address. You don't need that function technically. So, <laughs> so I'm kind of debating whether we're going to keep these three. But for now, it's good. We're, we're playing with the engine, right? And we're, what we're going to do is give this to the beta testing team, too, and get some feedback, see where you want to take it, right? Um, the big thing, that the part that makes, you can't see very well, DMA copy man and DMA physical copy. These are the functions that do the actual work. So we're using this DMA engine for just copy. 
So you call this function, daymate poppy min source destination size, uses the daymate to do it. Bam, done. <laughs> yeah. There you go. No fuss. You don't have to worry about what a transaction is and what a channel is and all that stuff. It's all behind the scenes. So the idea is that this resource does all the busy work that <coughs> a programmer wouldn't want to get involved with. Is there a flag for move? Move? Yeah, then move. I don't remember seeing one. Maybe it has one. Okay. I mean, it's just as well. You can go back and physically clear it if you want to, or yeah. deallocate it in whatever list you have. But yeah, I was thinking move. There are applications where MM movers have to be useful. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can do it your hand by hand something. True. True. Maybe there's, maybe there's a flag in there. I didn't write this. <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm, I'm trying to uh, take all of Jamie's work, summarize it. That's what I'm doing. Uh, and then there's copy man and physical copy man. Physical copy man just uses physical addresses instead of virtual. So again, technically not needed. Really, we could probably make this guy one function. We could, but these convenience functions, no, I think we can keep them, right? Not sure yet, not sure yet. Because once, once you release it to the public, you can't change your mind easily. So we gotta decide soon. Really, all I wanted was copy. <laughs> anyway, we'll see. And restrictions, there's always restrictions. So you have to be cash inhibited and coherent before you can copy this around, which is annoying. But that's how it goes, right? DMA hardware has to have certain assumptions. You have to make sure it's not cached and it's coherent so that if there's multiple cores, only one at a time, you can see it, right? Do you have the cache copies or read-only copies of the caches? They're only shared lines? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, so. I can't really think of a situation where you would have only read-only copies and not at least one uh, modifier exclusive line somewhere. Yeah. Maybe some cache has been sent out there and has had a lot of cache out there. It doesn't make any difference. It's yeah. easy enough to. So you can, do, you can imagine this this uh, engine would be used for your video players or something that moves a lot of loop memory around, big chunks of it, or a certain size of memory. File operations. Um, file operations. Can do. I'll make a chunk of it to get out of there. Just thinking DOS, right? <laughs> oh, it it well, chops things up on us. Oh, see, I don't know what we're like. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to check with uh, Colin. Good thing we have a DOS guy on the team. <laughs> he can think of a way uh, we can accelerate some of those copies. Mm -hmm. right? um, Ethernet driver? <laughs> Maybe a SATA driver. Got us the um, <laughs> see what general use it is. Right? I just thought, well, hey, maybe people like to use the hardware. Mm -hmm. See what the program is like. Uh, then I have a backlog for this already. So there's a busy wait in there now. I gotta get rid of that busy wait. It's released and enable transaction queue for all the channels. So right now. It only uses a single channel. I want all eight active. For example, um, you call, say, you have a task. You call copy them. I have a task. I call copy them. They should run simultaneously, intentionally. The DMA copies. So you're copying and I'm copying. There's eight channels, and they can run two at a time at the same time. So they should, in theory, be able to, right, <laughs> come back and then whoever gets the next, whoever gets the CPU next goes. So we should be able to queue up up to eight tasks.
to do uh, DMA transfers. And then the ninth task would be start on a wait list saying, no, it would either return an error code saying, sorry, it's busy, do the copy the old fashioned way, that kind of thing. Then maybe we'll need a lock, unlock, or something, right, to exclusively take a channel. Maybe. How about wait and retry? Well, it's up to you to code it. <laughs> As a programmer, right? You can, you can wait and retry. And of course, the SD, which as you know now, is very painful. <laughs> And then uh, credits. So I want to make sure Jamie got full credit. He was hired to do it. He delivered. And uh, he is also looking for work. So <laughs> if you have any mega work for Jamie, contact him at the center. <laughs> Based on the name, I assume that some of the stuff comes from the Frisco Linux guys, or what? Uh, from yeah. I assume he's no. Doing, no. No. So what does the FSL stand? For? Yeah, free scale. Right. I, okay, so so you call it FSL DMA, but there's nothing in there from nothing from there. Uh, okay. No. Right. No. He he did it the old-fashioned way. Data sheet. Okay. Experiment. Yeah. Yeah. Trudge through it like a trooper. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Somebody's got to do it. But he loves this stuff. Yes. Yeah. And all questions about what, what this is? Does it make sense? Do you know what a DMA channel is? I assume? Everybody? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is there a test program that's included? Oh, yeah. Actually, he delivered a test program, too. Yeah, I have a copy over there. So give it to you. When is this going to well, be? Actually, I should release it as part of the SDK. Okay. I'll just throw it in there. Speaking of which, is there going to be, will the exact SG SDK be a separate product or will it be integrated with Hyperion's OS4 SDK? Oh, the exact SDK? Right now it's a separate product. Okay. But it's designed to be integrated. So again, it depends on patient's level. Fair enough. And who is doing the OS4 SDK these days? I don't know. I don't know who does the OS4 SDK. It used to be. Or smile myself, I'm just wondering. Yeah. Did many of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, nobody's touched it since you, since you left. Oh yeah, yeah it's been touched uh, once more, twice more, like twice more. Yeah. Uh, Final Edition had an SDK update, for sure. I didn't do that. I should update one, too. Mm -hmm. Right. To yeah, I thought, yeah you, that's right. And update to the final. Yes. yes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> No sense. Um, <laughs> you're, 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 you're an addition. You're an update. So, addition. First update. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make a exec SG terminal edition. <laughs> Beyond final. Beyond. <laughs> final. <laughs> That'll be our tagline. Beyond final. <laughs> The OS Infinite Edition. Infinite Edition. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if we're that great. <laughs> Update one. Oh, that's scary. <laughs> Infinity plus one. <laughs> Back to the playground now. Yeah. yeah, back to the playground. That's right. So uh, this is the cool part of that engine. It's got eight channels, two that can go at the same time. So it's quite a quite a fancy piece of hardware, actually, for you know consumer level chips. Well, it's not really a consumer level chip. Oh well, uh, yeah, true. It wasn't built for consumer. It's an industrial chip. It, it's made for um, routers. It yeah. seems. I, I, I think I think this chip looks like it's made. For okay. That's the the DDA feel. is definitely a, a big clue as to what they. It was all for telecom stuff. So we can really do some weird stuff with it. <laughs> yeah, that's really complicated too. If you actually try to go into the documentation for that, that F, uh, DP, yeah. oh my god, that is some amazing it's insane. stuff. It's insane. That's pretty cool. It's insane. Yeah, uh, Jamie actually trudged through that, figured it out. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, he did. Um, 
not the only other guy to do that was the Linux Ethernet driver writer. I think he knew how it worked. Tab, what's his name? Tab? He's still around. He's on kernel.org. Very impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Considering uh, contracting, actually. <laughs> anyway, that's another thing. Uh, <laughs> So there, there you go. So I just wanted to give you a preview. This is already in the repository with test code. Um, we need to spend some more time to finish it up, which I'm hoping will be done first, second week of November, and then uh, release it to the beta test team to play with for a while and see how it goes. Just this piece, anyway. Awesome. The, 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 but the real use for this is going to be in the OS itself. I really hope there's somebody around who can make use of this for OS for itself. Yeah, I, I would hope OS components would use it too. Yeah. Yeah. I would hope so. Awesome. Thanks, sir. Keep them. Thank you. And that is it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Recovery disk? Yeah. Settings. Careful. <laughs> oh, I'm good. I'm good. Very little recovery. Okay, backup kick starts on this thing now. Oh, oh that's even worse. What have mm. they done? I'm getting there. Ah, that's better. Okay. <laughs> What's it called? DVD something. DVD. What's that editor called? Text editor. There yeah. it is. You have the. Yeah, you have. That's pretty small too. Uh, set fonts. Uh, make me bigger. Something that with syntax highlighting. Trunk, okay. Or trunk, yeah. Test. Test. Where am I? FSL. There it is. Ah, found it. Ah, okay, okay. Let's see if I can get to the Okay, there we go. So first thing I'd like to point out is the copyright. <laughs> it's not no, owned by Aeon. Right. Now, as we move on. <laughs> uh, so basically what Jamie did for us is create a nice little test program to try all the sizes. So you can see there's sizes here. And uses timer device to time it. And does, you know, averaging usual niceties that you would expect. And then he uh, does a whole bunch of copies, see? So there it is. Copy them test. Oh, that's not the actual function call. There's a whole bunch of tests there. There's where he's allocating the memory. So it's alignment 64, do this, do that. And there's source. There's destination. So nothing fancy, right? And then he, he does a verification at the end to make sure it actually did do what he wanted it to. Right. So that's the general idea. Now, he, he did fiddle with the memory a little bit to make it cache inhibit coherent, to make the memory sections coherent and cache inhibited. So he's got some code to do that. None of this is really fancy. This well, is I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you because yeah. I'm, I'm not familiar with this. So, 
what is this here? Interface it's card? called set memory attributes. What is this IMMU interface? What is that? Oh, uh, that's for the MMU. Um, to call set memory attributes, you have to be on the MMU interface. Yeah. You've never seen it, right? Never used it? No, I've never even seen it. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, this is what driver writers have to do a lot of. Like me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So this will make certain that it's non cacheable. Yep. Um, now, this is interesting. So this coherent flag, how could it not be coherent? I think it's more personal at this point. Okay. Yeah. So I'm fairly certain you can't really do that. If you were no, we only have one core, and yeah. nothing's going to happen. <laughs> but being thorough. And the architecture won't let you do that either. If you try, it, I don't see how you could physically do it. It would, it would check stuff the machine, the machine check or whatever the power it is. Yeah. Yeah. But it's good to be ready. Cool. All right, cool. Sorry, didn't interrupt. Yes. And then there's a bunch of timer device boilerplate. Ignore that, ignore that, ignore that. Let's go to the actual function that does the dirty work. And then clean up, right? Um, so this is the physical DMA copy mem test. There is using that function I mentioned. DMA lock physical memory. There's the interface. I don't know if I'm going to keep uppercase DMA or not. Is there something going on with the redraw here, or is it? It does a funny movement, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Now, what's this thing over here that I'm looking at? The the because um, I'm not familiar with the, the function. So you got size. That's a tag apparently to say that. Oh. When you yeah. allocate it, there's you're Sorry. you're going to write over whatever that space is with some value. Right. Uh, usually I. Whoa, that's weird. Yeah, I, I can't. Find Looks it. like the font is messing up. Uh, oh, I have it. I don't think it handles uh, the large font, to be honest. I don't think it handles a uh, non monospace font. What editor are you in? Yeah. ABD. ABD text editor. I don't have the latest version. It's better, but. <laughs> All right. Anyway, it has syntax highlighting, which is a light one. But yeah, there's a size, and then that's a tag, and that's B3 is just a random number he picked. All right, so it's going to overwrite that region with, Clear with value. 3 over and over and over again? Yeah, with B3, 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 okay. tag end, yeah. That's yeah. It's just uh, good old tags again. And then allocate the memory. And that's uh, source, that's destination. More boilerplate. There is the actual copy. So it goes from source to destination size. And then what, what we have in the API is we return true if it could do it, i.e. there was a channel open, okay. or you get a false. So if you get a false in a real program, you'd probably go, oh, I'll just call copy mem. Well, was the false because you failed to allocate a channel, or yeah. because there was some other exception? No, it, it means that um, at this point in, in the API, everything's set up and ready. So the only reason it would fail would be because, well, machine exception or, yeah. So I don't know if we should use a bool return, but that's there's always. Only, if there's only one type of return code, I guess it's OK. Yeah, but, but it kind of hog ties you. You're stuck, right? Yeah. Well, that's the point. I mean, if I've got some sort of hardware exception, then I'm going to retry it. The fallback should so maybe the API should specify that the fallback should always be non-DMA mem over copy. Don't retry. Yeah. Right. Because it could be a machine exception if that's what you guys are going to do. You're not going to specify. That's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, I can't imagine what's doing it. But everything is loading. I don't, I'm not familiar with the hardware. Yeah. 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 Me neither. Right. I'm not totally familiar with this DMA hardware either. The channels or the number of DMA transfers it can do in parallel? Or? Yes. How many channels? Eight. Okay. Is it possible that you wait for a split second and try again? Yep. So we, in that case, you need to know whether or not it was a failure due to channels or due to something right. else. That's right. right. That's right. That's, uh, that's what we're trying to argue through. But uh, it's, the argument would be, OK, if you couldn't do it with DMA, why don't you just try the old-fashioned way? CPU copy. Yeah. And then if that fails, bother me. Otherwise, just get it done, right? Could be. <laughs> yeah. 
Because I mean, if the, if the second slide is only going to be 64, well, but see, that's the thing. It's not. You're not actually doing the transactions manually. I was going to say, if it was only going to be for one transaction, 64 megabytes, a fixed thing, then it makes sense to go back and do it the old-fashioned way. But if it's going to be some massive thing, yeah, any maybe, size, in that case. You may you may want to actually sit there and retry. So maybe that should be considered. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we got to iron out. I'm hoping the beta testers will help. We <laughs> need developers, not testers. Because <laughs> you know you don't want want to get this wrong. Well, okay, if we get it wrong. We could always add brand new functions and just say, don't use the old ones. Yeah. So it's not the end of the world, right? But still, it'd be nice to get it right the first time. Do you maybe add a tag in there that specifies a method? And then that, if that method turns out to be wrong, you don't have to change the API. No, you just say a different method. Well, no, but the method is implicit in the function. If you're, if you're calling this, then you want to do this particular property. There's not, there's not multiple ways of doing it. Or say later on. Oh, I don't know. I, I just think you should have return code. That's all. Yeah. Well, Jamie so was cool. saying, like, like uh, Paul says, is why don't we just put tag list on the end of that, and then. If oh, we, I see. So instead of having separate functions entirely, just. Mm -hmm. So you have source destination just, size, comma tag list. Okay. And then you can have no tags or a bunch of tags. That was another idea, but that's kind of a cop out too, isn't it? <laughs> so, you know, if everything had a tag list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it kind of, I don't know. Because <laughs> this is specific to these chips only. I prefer a return code. For the, for the 8, 12, 22, the 5020, and the 5040. Yes. Only those chips. So if we come up with a new hardware platform, we'll throw a new um, DMA resource in there with a different, but very, very similar API, depending that? on what the DMA engine requires. So having a return code could be like, I'm a sheet that's supported, ignore it ever mm -hmm. again. If it's just a busy, I'm going to try again three times, then I'll do the old fashioned way. Yeah. What about the X1000? No. Yeah. It's not covered yet. Uh, it's on the back It's on the list. No. Support. I wouldn't cover it either. No, no, Sell new hardware. See, look how fast they <laughs> Sell come. Sell new hardware. No, 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 no. It was on your exact SG list. See? Support. This is support. <laughs> That's why we got to have a backlog. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just never ends. But I thought it's better to have the DMA engine than not because. Guys like Paul will say, use the hardware <laughs> I purchased. <laughs> yeah, I purchased an X1000 from AI. Where is my DMA? Exactly. You can't yep. be See? Where is my fortune? <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Sitting there sipping his drink. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see it, it, all the code around this function call, it's just support. And it's debugging, and it's printfs, and it's timers, and like you know, timer start, timer end, all sorts of things. You can really simplify this down. Yeah, right. <laughs> so this one actually exercises this function, and then further down it exercises the plain copy with the virtual addresses. <laughs> so it's, it's no, it's no, uh, not interesting. So. Same pattern. <laughs> But uh, that, that's our idea. Okay. So you, you open up the resource, you say get interface, and you get this IFSL DMA interface, and then you start calling functions on it. Right? So it's contained within that in the uh, namespace pollution. And if we come up with the PA6T DMA resource, If you mean when, <laughs> <laughs> then there's the G4 resource. Oh, let's say a more boring resource. That's not that's not exactly. <laughs> Even LD has limits. <laughs> <laughs> he just doesn't like it because it's a first <laughs> <laughs> Well, the 
they should have chosen the wrong five design. <laughs> 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 Hopefully that gives you kind of a, a preview, okay. if you will. How far along? Is it working? Yes. yes. It's but it's not. <laughs> That's a lot. It's not finished. finished. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is just a routine to copy. Go look in the, the beta list, the, ma the mailing list, because he had us try this. I think this is actually the test program he actually had us try. Yeah. Because uh, this is included in the current kernel for the testers? No. So where did, how did it run? Because he gave, me, he gave us a test program. He did the um, old-fashioned way. Bang, bang. Go oh, so he was, he was looking for reference numbers. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So now we have it as a kernel resource. Okay. So I would like to uh, exercise the API. The speed you can check for yourself. You can find out what's fast, what's not fast. By fiddling with the test program and compiling it. Does the SDK will be included as well? No. Away you go, right? And then once we're happy with it, We'll uh, throw it out to the public. Now, do I have to use those allocation and uh, uh, free functions if I wanted to set up moves <coughs> or copies? Can I just do it the old-fashioned way? You can do it the old-fashioned way. Because what I mean is, what I ideally like to be able to do is, you know, allocate a data set and then send it to an I/O device to do this. Right. Yep. Yeah. We can do that. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, there you go. This is a, one of the many projects I decided to just jump on. Um, the idea being that uh, I wanted to do something. <laughs> Instead, you know. And you're going to get it done in two weeks? No, that's when we'll that's due. That's when it's due. Actually, yeah, it is. He wasn't here for the November, second week of November. <laughs> Yeah. Um, about the uh, X1000, without getting into uh, the debate again, but uh, you said something about uh, that you didn't know the, the details needed to make it uh, run on, on uh, X1000. Yeah. Was that right? Yes. What, what exactly is uh, the problem? Or where to get it from, or, or oh, you just gotta study the data sheet and figure it out. Oh, okay, it's available, yeah. but yeah. yeah, okay. I know it's got one, and I looked at it um, when the X1000 first came out. Okay, it's been so many years I don't remember anything. Okay, That's <laughs> I know it had quite an extensive DMA engine, though. Okay, quite a few channels. Mm -hmm. We were thinking, I thought maybe I'm thinking four, though, not as many as eight as these ones. I'm not sure. I'm not sure yeah. now. I usually go in powers of two. <laughs> Harvard guys like powers of two. Yeah. They're strange that way. <laughs> it makes more sense. <laughs> okay. Why not have five DNA channels? Huh? Well, that's, that's wasteful. <laughs> See? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you could have five, you could have eight. Exactly. <laughs> How about nine? Then you could have six. See? <laughs> Does he? Does no. he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, that's that's uh, the preview. Anything else you want to see? Nah, that's, yeah. that's pretty simple. It is, it is. Looking so, forward to seeing what we can do with it and hopefully the well, two people still do it working for Hyperion will be able to make use of it as well. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I thought it would be a nice, just, um, I don't to say the word gift, but something new I, to do. There's a lot of performance, I think, really on the table with these machines. Yeah, and uh, we wanted to optimize the kernel, and this is kind of a helper to optimize. What cool. areas can it DMA to and from? Anywhere you Any have address? memory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Graphics card. Yeah. I have everything. It's never yeah. There you go. Could be highly useful. All right. Lots of, lots of answers. You know, I go in right set. California lifted off.